Thank you very much. I just want to uh, begin by apologizing for no ASL interpreter today. We have um, interpretation on video as well as full caption and uh, it'll be available tomorrow. First, I want to thank everyone for their cooperation over this week with this first major storm of the season. Uh, last Thursday, Boston set a record for snowfall for December 17th. All of our neighborhoods saw over 13 inches of snow. At the height of the storm, we had 700 pieces of equipment out on the streets. Uh, we were able to clear the roads quickly and get our city up and moving again. I want to thank everyone who did their part in uh, both during and after the snowstorm, 200 public work employees who worked the storm, who continue to work on cleanup efforts around the city. Um, we were cleaning crosswalks the other night and making sure that we continue accessibility in the city of Boston. I want to call out 311 call takers for fielding over 3,300 calls and, and worked long hours to make sure anybody who called in got their questions answered. The residents all over the city of Boston who shoveled their driveways, sidewalks, pedestrian ramps, uh, moved their cars during the snow ban, um, also looked in after, after neighbors, shoveled crosswalks and fire hydrants. I want to thank all of you for the work you did. Uh, Snowstorms are always a very much a community effort here in the city of Boston and we're asking residents to continue helping clear the snow. On, fr on Thursday and Friday this Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, the forecast calls for over an inch of rain. On the house, uh, we will see flooding. You'll see flooding. We're going to have ch uh, warm days tomorrow uh, in Christmas Eve and then Christmas Day. So we are going to be seeing flooding uh, if we, the storm drains, if the water doesn't have a place to go. And then the temperatures are expected to drop Friday night. Uh, our public works crew will be out treating roads for icy roads, but we're asking people as much water as we can get off the street would be great to do that. Thank you all for your continued help. I know we have probably a long winter ahead of us, so let's hope that uh, I don't feel like we want to break any more snow records. We'll let the 2015 one stand if possible. Uh, as far as COVID numbers, our latest COVID numbers, uh, we have state numbers as of yesterday, 3,760 new confirmed cases. Uh, there were 41 deaths reported. Our numbers in Boston, these are numbers as of today, 253 confirmed cases, bringing our total of people who, who've had the coronavirus in the beginning to 36,476. Uh, we had three new deaths reported today, bringing our death total to 975. Uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to the families of those who are suffering and sick with coronavirus and the, one, and the families who've lost loved ones. Uh, this entire year due to COVID-19, want you to know that you're in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, we had an average testing of 5,212 people tested each day. Uh, that's down slightly compared to the week before. Um, that does not include uh, college testing, so we, we, we're down a little bit in our testing. The average number of positive tests for each day for Boston residents was 447, that's a seven day average. That's about the same as it was the previous week, which is 441. Our current community positive rate in the city of Boston is 8.8%. Uh, that's up compared to 7.2 from the week before. Dorchester, East Boston, and High Park remain the neighborhoods with the highest positive, positive cases. Our case numbers uh, re certainly remain concerning to us here. Uh, and our hospital numbers also are higher than we'd like to see at this particular moment. We are staying closely connected to our hospitals with the state, uh, working to see how we can help and support them uh, collectively together. We're going to continue to work with them on shared efforts. Uh, as far as mobile testing sites go, we have more than 30 testing sites citywide, including mobile testing sites, which are free and open to all regardless of symptoms. This week, our mobile testing sites are in High Park at the Boston Renaissance Charter School in High Park Ave. Uh, it's today. Uh, tomorrow, December 22nd, and December 23rd. Also on Saturday, the 26th, it's drive-through only, an appointment is required, so it's a, it's a great way for people not have to get out of your cars, particularly now with the winter and with worry about physical social distancing, so you have to call ahead. Uh, in Roxbury, at the Washington Park Mall on Warren Street, uh, today through Thursday on Christmas Eve, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., on Saturday, December 26th, from 10 a.m. to 2.30. Pre-registration is required there as well. Uh, in Jamaica Plain, at the Mildred Haley Apartments on Heat Street, today until 7 p.m. Tomorrow, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Walk-ups, uh, no appointment needed, so you can just walk up there. There might be a bit of a line, but you can just walk up, and, and the weather is going to be conducive to that tomorrow, because it won't be freezing. 
Uh, with Christmas this week, uh, there will be reduced hours for mobile testing. Uh, and as always, you can call ahead if you're looking to get tested. To learn more about any of our test sites or testing in the city of Boston, you can go to boston.gov slash coronavirus or just simply call 311. We're going to continue to encourage everyone to get tested. Uh, the more people that get tested, the, the better idea that we have of where the virus is and how it's impacting and affecting our communities. Um, and we can also work to get the resources to our neighborhoods that, that we need to get them through. Uh, we certainly have to reduce the opportunities for COVID transmission so fewer people get sick. Hospitals can continue to treat everyone, whether they have COVID or other serious conditions. So that's ultimately what our goal is. Uh, a few hours ago, Governor Baker announced 25% capacity for most industries in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. These restrictions are in effect starting Saturday, this Saturday, December 26th, until January 10th. As a reminder, on December 16th, Boston moved back to a modified phase two, step two approach for at least three weeks. We're also going to be following the state's rollback on capacity. But that does not change the industry's temporary close in person in Boston at the moment. Museums, movie theaters, gyms will not reopen, will not reopen to in-person um, use until at least January 6th. Uh, you can get a full list at boston.gov slash reopening. Starting Saturday, in accordance with the state's new restrictions, restaurants, close contact personal services, places of worship, indoor golf facilities, retail business in Boston will be reduced to a 25% capacity. Office space will be reduced from a 40% to 25% capacity as well. The goals on these rollbacks is to slow the spread of the virus so we can avoid a more severe shutdown later. Uh, and I know that these decisions are not easy, uh, as I say all the time from this podium or any podium that I'm on in. Um, these are complicated, challenging decisions, but these numbers are going in the wrong direction. And what we want to do is really prevent us from having to shut our hospitals down to any patients but COVID patients. So I'm just imploring everyone to please follow these guidelines uh, and let's do everything we can to keep each other safe. On the stimulus bill, we're doing everything that we can, as, you meant, as I mentioned, to reduce the transmission and soften the blow to our economy. And we've continually called on the federal government to do more. Last night, Congress passed a $900 billion COVID relief package. I want to thank the Massachusetts delegation for their advocacy. While this bill is far from perfect, this bill is necessary steps in the right direction. It provides supports for families and small businesses, schools, and vaccine distribution uh, that we hear about every single day. It helps protect jobs, boosts unemployment benefits, provides more access to food through increased SNAP benefits. It extends the federal eviction moratorium. And I want to thank, them, thank Congress for acting on this bill because I've been on many calls with homeowners and renters and, and restaurant owners and business owners over the last several months here, and, and they've been crying out for help. Uh, and this is a piece of it. But Congress needs to go further to help the American people. Uh, the Biden-Harris administration talks about and has a plan to act immediately to bring comprehensive support to cities across America. We hope that will include direct aid to all of our cities and towns. Uh, this is not a Republican Democrat issue. This is an American issue. And we need to continue to work together collectively to support and help and not see our economy collapse here in the United States of America. Uh, this crisis is far from over. People and communities are still struggling every single day. And our recovery is going to be a long process. We need the federal government to do its part in getting our country back on its feet. And that's what we expect our leaders in Washington do that, that get elected. So it's my hope that when Congress returns from break, they will not waste a minute in delivering aid to the American people that they deserve, including our businesses all across this country. Um, the um, holiday guidance with the holidays here pretty much in a couple of days, I want to share some holiday safety information. Before I talk about COVID procedures, uh, the Boston Police Department has some important tips on crime prevention. Unfortunately, this year, this time of year, we're seeing, seeing an uptake in package thefts and car break-ins. We recommend making arrangements to ensure packages won't be left unattended, whether you're sending them or receiving them. The Postal Service offers special delivery instructions, which can, which can be submitted through their website. We're also remi reminding everyone not to leave valuables in cars and double check that your cars are locked. If you must keep valuables in your car, keep them out of sight, put them under something, cover them up. 
I'm encouraging people to visit bpdnews.com for more tips on avoiding thefts and what to do if you experience it uh, this holiday season. We're also reminding everyone to remain vigilant with COVID-19 precautions throughout the holiday. We are still in a very critical period. This virus does not go away during the holiday season. It does not go away if you, don't let, if you let your guard down. We all have a responsibility to keep our community safe and keep each other safe. Our choices now could make a difference in what January and February look like here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but also in this country. And we need to keep reminding that you should only celebrate only with the people that you live with. I know that it's tempting and it's been a difficult year for a lot of people and you want to bring other folks into your household, uh, but that's not safe for you. That's not safe for them. That's not safe for the people that you might come in contact with. There should be no holiday parties. I know that that's something as well. Uh, last night, some of the, the young people in, in, the, in City Hall, they had a Zoom holiday party, uh, and, and it was a different way of they would normally be together, but they, they decided not to do that this year uh, because of COVID-19. We strongly encourage all Boston residents not to travel. Travel increases the chance of getting and spreading COVID-19. We saw it with the holidays of Thanksgiving. We saw the days before leading up where we were in numbers, and we saw the five days afterwards, and we saw that number get extremely high. If you're planning on gathering with your family outside your household or traveling, we, we urge you to use extreme caution. In Boston, indoor gatherings should be limited to 10 people or fewer, and there's no exceptions for the holidays. Again, it's not something I want to be talking about here during the holiday season, the Christmas season, but it's something for your own public health. And we encourage everyone to be wearing a mask when they're not eating or drinking and staying, trying to stay six feet apart from each other as much as possible. And I also want to just say getting tested does not protect you from this infection. You cannot test your way in or out of, the, of a safe traditional gathering here uh, this year. It will, be, it will be still a higher risk activity and we're asking you to refrain from engaging in this activity if at all possible, the activities of gathering and parties and things like that. I know it's, it's hard to be away from people you love, especially during the holiday season. And, and as I mentioned earlier, listen, no one knows this more than I do, and all of us know how long and how hard this year has been. It's hard to say no to our loved ones. Many of us have been having difficult conversations with family members. Person, considering safer ways to connect, um, think about virtual platforms and other ways of con connecting with your families, if at all possible. This is the time to be creative and time to keep the holiday spirit alive. Um, I want to make an, one, one announcement today. Um, this year, the holiday call event at City Hall for our seniors. Usually we have hundreds of seniors that come to City Hall to make free calls, long distance phone calls. Not to do that, but we're, but we're loneliness and the economic insecurity. place on the phones so they can have calls to their families. AT&T is making a $30,000 donation to our partner Tech Goes Home, the digital equity nonprofit. Tech Goes Home will work with our Eight Strong Commission to provide devices and technology training older adults. I encourage seniors and older Bostonians to reach out to our Eight Strong Commission to learn more about the ways that you can stay connected and engaged for the new year. Access to technology is, pressing, is a pressing need in Boston's older community, and we want to make sure that we do everything we can to let our seniors stay connected to their families wherever they live. I do want to give a shout out to AT&T for their, for their always kind generosity during this time of year. Tech Goes Home and our Age Strong team, Emily Shea and the Age Strong team, for keeping this tradition alive and helping residents connect with their loved ones during this holiday season. And just uh, as I end here, anyone who feels isolated or lonely, I encourage you to take care of yourself and your mental health. The end of the year is a time for reflection, and we'll be reflecting on this very difficult year, clearly. Many people have been hit very hard by this pandemic. We have had, we have had to make, many of you have had to make lots of sacrifices, sacrifices that you could never imagine this time last year. It's okay to be overwhelmed, it's okay to be tired, it's okay to be sad. Don't be afraid to talk to somebody. Don't be afraid to reach out for help. 
You can reach out to a health care provider or a trusted community organization, or you can call 311. We have uh, the ability to connect you to resources. I think that you need to take that opportunity if that's the case. You can also call the Samaritans 24-7. The helpline at the Samaritans is 877-870-4673. We don't want anyone suffering in silence this year or any year. That includes p people facing domestic violence or any kind of abuse of any kind. If you are experiencing domestic violence or a fear of your life, we're asking people to not hesitate to call 911 or someone you know that you need that you can get help for, from. And we appreciate the community with this help as well. We're asking people to stay in touch with your friends, stay in touch with your family, stay in touch with your neighbor, those folks that are in recovery, reach, go through your phone, reach out to somebody that might be sick and suffering, somebody that's new in the program or somebody that needs the program. Help us make sure that no one feels alone this holiday season. You know, we still have, unfortunately, a long way to go in this crisis, but we have turned the corner on this pandemic. And we have reasons, certainly, to be optimistic with the vaccine coming out about a few days ago now. We're excited about it. Every day, people are getting vaccinated, including right here in the city of Boston. When the time comes, I ask everyone to follow the lead of our health experts and heroes and medical experts and get the vaccine. It's another act that we can all take as individuals to protect ourselves and our families and our communities and bring us through this crisis safely. We are finally at the point where we feel like we have less days ahead of us of this virus than we do behind us. And while we don't know exactly when this pandemic will end, we do know that there are better days coming. So I'm asking everyone to hang in there. I'm asking everyone to take care of yourself. Look out for one another. Listen to the public health officials. Keep doing your part to make sure that we stay safe and protect, protected and protect those around you. We will all get through this difficult time if we all continue to work together. I just want to end by thanking everybody. I know that it's not Christmas Eve and it's not Christmas Day yet. Um, I'm probably not going to have another press conference until next week. I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday Season. And I hope that you and your loved ones are safe and stay well and let you know that we're doing everything we can. So 2021 is coming in. We'll have a, a great 2021. With that, I'll open up for questions from the press. Yeah, if there was a complaint against the police officer, I'm not sure if there's a complaint against the police officer or that video circulated in a, in an, in a periodical, an article. So I'm not sure if there was a complaint. So let's hypothetically, hypothetically, hypothetically say for this moment that there's a complaint against the police officer. That complaint would then go to the Civilian Review Board. Uh, we'll go to the, the, the Office of, of Accountability. They then would put it over to the Civilian Review Board. Um, and the civilian board would, would do an investigation of that. At the same time, subsequent to that, the, 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 there could be an internal affairs investigation as well with the police department. Uh, When's the earliest the uh, whole pack could become a reality? Well, we, the, the council just voted on it last week. We're going to have, have a meeting on it to go over what they made some changes to yesterday. I'd say the OPAT, right after the first CEA, we'll have the OPAT in place. I can't comment if they have been probed or not before this. There could have been investigations going on. There could be investigations going on right now. I have not had the conversation with the commissioner. That's unfortunate. I don't know who's tweeting that. That's not true. Um, the Boston EMS, uh, EMS uh, Chief Hooley had a conversation yesterday with the union. That's not accurate. Uh, I wish before they would tweet it out. They, I had a conversation yesterday with the union, if it's the union tweeting out. Um, and, you know, I told them I'd get back to them. So, again, that's not an effective way to get your message out by Twitter when you have a direct line to the mayor and the, and the chief. So I'll have to look into that one. And there is a plan to vaccinate. Obviously, uh, just to be clear for Boston EMS, if you're listening, um, the vaccine, we have 300,000 vials of vaccine. Uh, the vaccine, the priority is hospital workers. Uh, that's the first priority. Um, and I know that we've been in contact with, with um, I think, the first responders in the second round. Um, so I mean, we have to get our hospital workers taken care of. Uh, this is coming from the federal government down to the state. 
Um, so again, it's, uh, tweeting is not the most impactful way, in my opinion, to get uh, a way to, to figure it out. Yeah. yeah, Christmas is going to be different. Um, you know, Christmas Eve is, um, in the past, it's always been, we've always gone to different families' houses for Christmas Eve. Uh, last year we had it at our house. Um, people came over, my mother came over, uh, family came over, and it was, you know, it was kind of a, a, a newer tradition for our house because we've always traveled around. Um, and it was fun. And, you know, and obviously, I don't know if we were going to start a tradition uh, last year, but certainly we were going to do something and, and have people over again, and you can't do that this year. Um, you know, I generally go and visit my mother, uh, stop in Christmas Eve for a little while, drop off some stuff to her, and then Christmas Day go back there. Uh, and then people come into my mother, visit her, and nieces and nephews visit her. Uh, that won't be happening this year. Uh, so it's, it's really going to be really hard on, on particularly older people who, who understand that the virus is serious but don't quite understand why we can't get together. And, you know, for me, it's going to be, it's going to be low key. I mean, I hope, um, in the sense of, um, you know, I'm going to obviously be in my house in the morning. I'll go to my mother's, um, and, and, and that's all we're going to do. There won't be any gatherings this year. So there's, there's a different feel for Christmas. I will be honest with you. Saturday, I think it was Saturday. Um, I, I did event, um, in town and then I went down Newbury street and I did some little shopping in and out of stores. And, um, there really was, there's some people there, but not a lot. And, it, you know, normally, you, you, there's no way I could go to Newbury Street the Saturday before Christmas and get five feet. Uh, so it, it does feel different this year. Um, the one thing I'll say, anyone who hasn't shopped yet for Christmas, if you're looking for an idea for a gift, my recommendation is go to your local restaurant, buy gift certificates from them, and give them out to people so as the pandemic moves forward. Because the, those, rest, those gift certificates, whether it's a retail shop or a pandemic, goes right into the hands of the owners and, and the, the workers in those places. So if you're looking for last minute gift ideas, go around to buy a bunch of gift certificates at local restaurants if you can. It'd be a great way to you know, celebrate the local neighborhoods and give them a little bit of business. question is, what are we going to say to these businesses that are not going to make it through the, the Christmas season? Um, you know, we, we were able to, in the city, create, whether it's funds or relief, about $26 million in total. We still have some money, but that's, that's just a, a small fraction of what needs to happen. This federal relief package uh, is, is really going to be helpful to a lot of city, a lot of businesses in America. And I'm hopeful that the state, before the end of session, uh, can also, there, there's a bill, the uh, economic development bill, there's $50 million in that bill uh, that could go direct relief to, to businesses. I'm hoping that that comes out. Now, all these buckets of, of resources can help these businesses. Um, your question is absolutely right. A lot of these businesses are open. They're not going to make it. And, and if we help them, they might be able to survive, get through the winter, and possibly get to the spring and see what happens. So that's what we need to do. We need to help these businesses get there. And every business that we think about, when you think about a business closing its doors, um, people lose their job. So it's not just the, building, the business owner that loses their company. It's everyone associated, whether they're washing dishes or cleaning tables or waitressing or, or, or waiting on tables or bartending or whatever it might be. All those people lose their jobs. So we've got to do everything we can to try and keep those people in their, in their roles. You said it was complicated decisions when we talk about going down to 25%. What's kind of your thinking here as you juggle with other cases and these businesses, like you said, that may not make yeah, I think the governor, the governor announced that today, and really there was, a, there was a, an article in the New York Times that talked about uh, there's a couple ways of looking at bring, temp, stemming down the rate. One is complete shutdown, and quite honestly, I don't think today that's an option here uh, because of no federal relief, no, not enough relief to keep these businesses alive like we did the first time. So the second thing is reducing all activity down to 25 percent, and it shows as a parallel there showing that the numbers actually of infection can come down as well and having less activity. So I think that's the mindset behind the 25% across the board. Uh, again, it's very, so it allows businesses to stay open and, and, and move forward. You're also talking about January, February, March, where it's gonna be very cold. And you know, I don't know, restaurants do, don't do as well in January, February. So we're hoping that this is something short of a complete shutdown that you give the opportunity for the businesses to continue to stay open moving forward. Uh, that's, the mind, that's, that's probably the thought process behind it. And how important is it just to be enforced? Oh. Restaurants and retail, 
It's real. It's, you have to. I mean, listen, if, if, if we don't cut back on activity, then the coronavirus and people are saying, well, it's not in my restaurant and it's not in my gym and it's not here, it's not there. Uh, and, and there's really no way of telling that to be true, number one. And number two, it's about cutting down on activity and, and people contact with each other. And that's really the goal of, of how, you know, two people go into a gym, they work out. Uh, they might have it inside the gym, they work out, they get virus, they go out. A couple of days later, they, they come down with, 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 the, with the virus. And you don't really know where, where they were originated, but, but cutting down on that ability inside the gym to have more separation. Right now, they're closed in Boston. On January 6th, we're going to see what happens. If, if, if we can reopen the gyms January 6th, it'll be at 25% capacity. So they'll have to schedule time to get people in there, in there to use it, the ones that are still working out right now. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, a lot of people still aren't going to gyms. A lot of people still aren't going to restaurants. A lot of people still aren't going to movie theaters. They're not going to museums they're not, because they're worried about the virus. And at the end of the day, that doesn't help businesses either. So our, what we, our goal has to be to beat the virus. Our goal has to be to get people feel safe and get them safe where they can go back out and enjoy all the, all the, the businesses and, and what we have here in the city of Boston. That's ultimately our goal. Has the recent, recently released footage changed your assessment of PPD? I mean, yeah, you're going to keep coming at me this, so I'll, so I'll be honest. We have a police department that night that there was a lot going on in Boston that night, May 31st. Um, I would say as the beginning of that night started, we had tens of thousands of people in Boston that were marching through the streets of Boston, and, and there was a peaceful, peaceful, um, peaceful demonstration, peaceful march, pe peaceful um, people speaking their minds. Many people went home around 8.30, 9 o'clock that night, and, and, and in some cases, violence erupted. We saw looting of stores, we saw burning of police cars, we saw vandalism. Um, I, would, I would probably expect most of the people that were causing that, that, that turmoil in the city that night, they weren't in town as the other people were earlier that night doing peaceful protests. Um, there's many, many hours and hours of video. Um, nine police officers got hurt, dozens went to the hospital, uh, dozens of people got hurt that night. We had all kinds of chaos. Um, I don't think playing it out here is, is the, I don't mean to, I'm just saying, is the right way to do it. Uh, what was our response to that night? Our response to that night was to put together a task force. Uh, we had members of the community put together a task force. Um, I said at that point, I'm not going to interfere with the task force. I'm going to wait for the task force to come back with recommendations to me, and we will see how we move forward. As the task force was doing their job, they came back with several recommendations, many recommendations. And at that point, I said, I'm going to institute all the recommendations. We came back with a civilian review board with subpoena powers. We came back with a, a board to, to look at internal affairs. We came back with a, with a um, looking at diversity in the police department, creating more, um, an officer to do more diversity to recruitment in the police department. We came back with more, expanding the body camera program, we came, which body camera caught this. So if we hadn't instituted a body camera program in the very beginning, this video footage might not have been caught. So the body camera caught this. So again, we're going we're gonna to learn from our mistakes. The very beginning of, of, of the reason why people were in the street in the first place was because of, in, in some cases, the murder of George Floyd. That's why people were in the streets in the first place. So I think that as a mayor and I think, I think our police department, our commissioner, and people understand, most people understand, that there is need for us to do a better job in policing across the United States of America. And I think that that's something that we need to do. Uh, I can't go into the particulars about this, this footage because there was footage right before the footage that everyone saw. So there's, there's lots here. So we're going to let the Internal Affairs Department do their, do their job. Um, the, as soon as the commissioner found out about this, he put the person on leave instantly. Um, he, was, he was pretty upset about it. I spoke to him. I've spoken to him three or four times about this incident, uh, about this issue already. I didn't speak to him today about it, but I spoke to him yesterday, twice, the day before. Um, so we're going to do everything we can to continue to move forward. I'm sure you've gotten a letter from city councilors and other city lawmakers who are pointing to this footage and saying, oh, this is evidence that the, uh, the tear gas or rubber bullets restrictions, the proposal that's before you should be passed, uh, or you, you should support it and sign it. What do you make of that assessment? Yeah, you, you, you can't, I don't necessarily think, I, I think, I think rubber bullets, I don't think we use rubber bullets in the city right now anyway. I think they're, they're very rarely used if we use them at all. Uh, we are going to have, I'm having a conversation tomorrow to talk about how we move forward. 
Uh, but I want, I want you just to understand, too, and this, this will never be written, the majority of the police officers that went in to work that night, um, you know, we saw, we saw police officers hugging people. We saw police officers working with the community. I don't, I don't read about that in the newspaper. I don't see that on TV. Uh, we saw police officers who got hurt that night that had family members. Uh, we have police officers that, that, that actually believe in and, and firmly stand with the people that were marching in the streets that night about the issues of racial justice and systemic racism. I've had many conversations about that. And, and I think that, you know, at the end of the day, when I said in the paper today, I was on, on a radio show yesterday that Milton quoted me on, uh, what I said was we have some great police officers in Boston and we have wonderful police officers in Boston. And we're going to continue. I, di I didn't say yesterday we were a perfect police department. I said we have challenges that we have to fix, but we have a great police department that work hard every day, that keep people safe. Uh, we have a police department uh, just last Saturday. I know a friend of mine who's a police officer took a family shopping. That wasn't anywhere to be read about or tweeted about or seen because he didn't want that to be out. He wanted to help families. So, again, I think as we go into 2021, we need to work together. Um, you know, the, the, the defund the police and all that, all the movement there. We need to find a, a, a medium place. We need to find middle grounds here. Uh, and, you know, I go back to the task force. They did amazing work in, 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 in putting together something that, quite honestly, a lot of people uh, would have put their hand up, even maybe myself a couple of years ago, and realizing the urgency of this time. And, and I appreciate the city council working on these issues. Um, but I also, you know, they, we need to have more dialogue with the city council. They did that without talking to me, and I think that they didn't have a conversation with, they listened to the police department, but there's some concerns that, that we, I have about some of that stuff that they banned the other day. But again, I will, I will act appropriately on it next week and decide what I'm going to do um, and, and how we move forward. All right? Thanks, everybody. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to you guys.